The final stage of this montage is the uh, embellishment and uh, adding some features into the foreground here which will help kind of improve the, the perspective, give the thing a bit more depth uh, and a bit more interest as well. So it might be people or vehicles. Uh, in our case I'm going to put some trees in. So I'm going to go back to our guides layer make that current. I'm going to stick that on top so I can see it clearly again. Okay, I'm going to draw a pretty heavy line. I'm going to double up the line weight now because I need to see this a bit clearer. Let's make this say about 12. Okay, uh, so I'm going to use this kind of tram track that's running down the middle of the scene. That's where I'm going to place my tree features. Okay, but I need a line for the tops of the trees as well, something to give give me an impression of the height of the trees. So if I was if I said that the trees that were getting planted were going to be the same height as these windows, that's reasonably kind of believable height. So if I pick a pick a position, kind of come out from that the, the, the top of those windows, you know, that's that's a rough you know probably seven or eight meters high, that's pretty big. So if I come out to about here in line with that point but try and pick up on the perspective. Okay, so the perspective line is more in this position. Okay, so I'm taking that height out to here, but then picking up on the perspective. Okay, so the tops of my trees are going to go to this green line. Okay, so I'll close the woodboarding and I'm going to open a tree image. Okay, and these are commercial type ones that have got the uh, the alpha channels built into them. Okay, so if I go to the channels area, have a look at the alpha channel that's embedded, use that as the selection tool. So you load the channel as selection, back to RGB, control C to copy, sorry, go to layers, control C to copy, Come back to the proposal, control V to paste. Okay, so that's the, the size that that's coming in. Okay, it's not huge, but if I move the tree over to this position, you can see it looks pretty realistic. Okay, I'm kind of clashing with that lamppost there, so I probably want to put my first tree round about here. I'm going to take the snapping off just now, and so I've got a bit of freer movement. Okay, so I want two trees. Uh, they both want to look pretty similar. So any modification I make, I should make it now before I copy the tree. So I'm going to change its color. So let's let's zoom in on the on the tree. <coughs> you can see some trees in the distance here. They're much darker, much greener. This is you know looking a bit bizarre with that kind of color. So image adjustments hue and saturation. Okay, so let's push the hue into the greener area. Okay, probably about there. Take the saturation down a bit. Take the lightness down a fair bit as well. So make the, the greenery look a bit darker. A bit more kind of to match the kind of lighting of the day. So okay that. Okay, so this one needs, if it was planted here, if it was in this position, then it's going to need to be a bit bigger. Okay, so I'll scale that up, edit, transform, scale, and it's this bit, the, the crown of the tree, that's going to be touching the green. So hold shift and drag the corner. Okay, let's put it back where it started. It's not quite centered, so. Okay, a little bit bigger. Okay, if I wasn't too happy with the amount of trunk there, it looks a bit spindly. Okay, I'm going to move it down because I'm going to chop the bottom of it off. So I'd rather have a bit more leaf and a little less trunk. Okay, go with that. And then I'm just going to zoom in carefully and trim, trim the trunk. So needs to be kind of semi-circular so I'll take away that amount of trunk the 
you're the designer, you decide how it's going to work. Okay, that looks good. Okay, and if I want another one of those, so I'll rename this to tree one. If I want another one of these, just duplicate the layer, rename it to tree two. Okay, move it. And bizarrely, isn't it optical illusion, this looks smaller than that tree now, isn't it? But it's not. Okay, and if I wanted to, I could maybe rotate that a little bit. Looks the trunk looks a little bit kind of leaning the wrong way. And we can scale that up at the same time. So edit, transform, and scale. So make this much bigger. So I'm going to place my tree at that position so that the crown needs to be a bit bigger. Okay, maybe rotated it a bit too much there. So I'll rotate it back a bit. Probably was okay originally. Okay, and give it a little bit. Okay. Now this tree unfortunately is sitting above an object that's in the foreground okay this planting sort of plant pot holder thing is nearer me than the tree so i need to either cut a shape out of the tree or more more sensibly create a layer mask for the tree okay and this involves tracing around this shape using the polygonal lasso now I'll start this off, but I'm, I'll pause the video because it takes a little bit of time to get around that object. So firstly I need to be able to see through the tree so I can see what I'm, I'm trying to trace. So I'll change the opacity of tree 2 and zoom in much, much closer. I need to be in very close for this really. Okay, and then I'll start my polygonal lasso and just very carefully trace around these plants. So make sure you've not got anything selected at the moment, and then I'll start the selection. Okay, I'm not going to go into every single leaf, but you can see generally what I'm doing here. I'm trying to pick out the shape of the planter. So I'll pause the video just there and come back to it once I've got all the way around. Going carefully onto the metal work. As we go around, I'll pause it again just now. Okay, so carefully around the metal work. So I'm coming back now to where I started. Okay, and because this object has a gap inside it. I need to take that out of the selection. So I hold the Alt key and create a, like a subset shape. created okay and this is going to become a layer mask for tree 2 okay so if I just cut that away if I just cut that from tree 2 then I couldn't move tree 2 okay if I just demo that okay so deselect now if I try to move tree 2 now, you'll see it's got a big hole in it. Okay, The better way is to create a layer mask. Okay, but we invert the selection first. So select inverse. Okay, so that this ends up being the black area in the layer mask. Okay, create layer mask. Difficult to see, this icon is extremely small. If I if I Layers. If I 
click on that you can see the shape of the layer mask. Okay, go back to that. So I was holding Alt there to click, so you can view the layer mask. Okay, if I take, we've got a, a, a chain between the two. If I take the chain off and now try and move the tree, you'll see that it's, it's we've got this kind of 3D impression. It's like the tree is behind the, the object. Okay, put it back where it was. Okay, and that's how that's that's done. The proper use of a layer mask there. Okay, the uh, the trees look a bit strange, as if coming straight out of the ground here. So what you might do is is create a shape for a tree grill. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'll put it under the tree, and this will be a tree grill. Okay, I'm not going to try and draw this very carefully because I'm. I'm not going to make a very good job of it. But the, the paving here ha is really helpful. We can actually use it to help us draw the shape of the tree grill. So I'll just select an area that's perspective-wise, it's looking, it fits the, the position of the tree. Okay, so I'll bring it back down to this line that we've got here. Well, let's go to, to there, I think. Let's make it a bit narrower on this side. Okay, I'll take away that little bit of selection there. It's just gone off a tiny bit. Okay, and then all you need to do is just colour that in. So I'll, I'll just select a, a kind of a, a dull grey and then pour the paint into that area. Select and deselect. Now, if you want to make it a little bit softer, you could fade it a little bit just to, to take the the hardness of it. Okay, the guides have done their job. You can hide the guides. Okay, and similarly, this tree would need a, a tree grill as well. Let's just move it slightly onto that line because that's where we can center the trees. Okay, and then a tree grill. I'm trying to pick up on the perspective of the of the paving lines here. So that's quite distorted at this side, a long way, a long way away. Okay, use the same shade of grey. Okay, put it on the tree grills layer. And we want the paintbrush, sorry, the paint bucket. Okay, this needs to be below both trees. Select and deselect. That's looking much more interesting now. Um, let's add some people in here now and the thing to do with people is to try and get their eye, eye level correct and what this should be it should be halfway of the photograph so that should be where the camera target is unless you were looking very vertical so if, if we put on the grid for the here so it's view show grid now if your grid lines don't look as if they're in the middle of the, the screen then you want to go to Edit Preferences Guide Grid and Slices Okay, let's make the grid a bit more visible, let's make it yellow Okay, and say that every grid line every 50% Okay, so you definitely know where the, the middle of the photograph is now. So you can see here that that position is basically where this guy's eyes will be. So if we get the people's heads and eyes in the same places then everything should look, perspective wise, it should look correct. So I'll file, open, I'm going to go for casual 135, it's a girl playing the violin. Have a look at the channels alpha 1, load the channel as a selection, RGB, layers, control C to copy. Okay, finish with a tree, finish with a girl, control V to paste her in. Okay, she's enormous at the moment, so we'll scale her down, edit, transform, scale. Okay, alright, so if she was stood here, her head and eyes should be 
at that position. Okay, so if I place her there, that's where her eyes should be. Okay, if she was stood over here, then we scale her down so that her eyes are back on that grid line. It's as easy as that. So it doesn't matter where she stood, you just make sure the eyes go back onto to the grid line. Oops. Try that again. Okay. She's got her head down, lean down, so I'll make her a little bit lower because her, her neck is bowed there. Okay, but I want to place her here. So stood in front of those bollards, playing a playing a violin. So I'll put it there. Okay. And we'll put somebody else in the scene as well. Stood watching, so load his channel as your selection. RGB layers, Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Then he's just stood watching. If he was stood exactly there, then edit, transform, scale, and his eyes should be around about that position. Okay, it looks from stood there it looks like he's looking down the road. So here it looks like he's looking at the shop. You know, you, you've got to kind of consider you know the angle of where their eyes would be looking. Putting him in the middle here is kind of distracting from from the, the proposal. So not too happy with him. I'm gonna hide him. Okay, so we've got I'll just rename the layer here. Person violin. Okay. Person stood one. Okay. I'm going to hide them. Load another one. Okay. This one might work a bit better. Channels alpha one. Load channel selection. RGB. Layers, Control C. We've got the copy of her, Control V. So you can see the angle of her camera. So we can move her possibly over to here so we can still see our proposal through. So edit, transform, scale. So we'll scale her down to her eyes. That's a better level. So she stood, taking a wee snap. There's a girl playing the violin. She's never seen anybody playing the violin before. That's a bit strange. Okay. Watch out for your layering here. They've got this person, camera, and these should really be in front of the trees. So let's pull the trees down in front of them. Okay. Somebody there. Just to make sure. And people could do with having a shadow so I'm just going to do a very crude very crude shit painting on the floor so, but I'm going to select an area first so create a layer I'll call this people shadows okay and using my polygonal lasso okay I'm just going to kind of create a rough Actually, if I if I feather this by probably about five pixels, it will help give it a soft shadow. Okay, over here, put one shadow for her as well. Okay, just a, a little hint of a shadow. Okay, I can fill those with with black, and then fade them down quite a lot. So there's just a hint of a shadow on the ground. Okay, select and deselect. Okay, you can make that a bit stronger. You could have painted those with a feathered brush or whatever. So they really want to be pretty weak. Okay, the last thing you want to do is, is kind of try and adjust the contrast here. The, the 
the background image isn't really that sharp so the, the things that we've brought in seem to be very very crisp and very sharp so tree one tree two is the furthest tree one is the furthest away tree and we've got things mixed up a wee bit here the the layer mask has shifted from I've accidentally dragged the layer mask from one layer to another so what I need to do is grab that and put this onto tree 2 okay that's that don't know how I did that at some point so we'll take the layer mask off this one so you right click it and delete the layer mask from that one that's better I'm not sure how I managed to do that I must have just dragged something inadvertently okay so person camera the lighting isn't ideal it's not kind of coming from the right direction so image adjustments brightness and contrast let's drop the contrast a lot okay take a little bit of the brightness off her okay image adjustments hue saturation we have another setting called lightness which is slightly different it's a bit different to brightness okay same with the violinist image adjustments brightness contrast okay take the contrast right down a little bit off the brightness tone down those trousers image adjustments hue saturation and add a little hint to the lightness just kind of weakens them makes things look a bit more sympathetic same with the trees okay this tree is a bit further away so it should be lighter so tree one image adjustments brightness contrast so take the contrast down okay image adjustments hue saturation Put the lightness up just a smidge okay we could blur that as well so filter blur just brings your focus onto this item here okay then the near tree tree number two image adjustments brightness contrast so i'm just going to deal with the contrast there and you can see there that everything looks a little bit better, a little bit happier than it did before. Okay, now what I could do as well is improve the sky there. It's uh, relatively easy to pick, but bear in mind if you if you change the sky, you would have to do it on the as existing as well. So I'll put the as existing right to the top so we can compare the two as existing and proposed. So I'm going to resist changing the sky, but it could be done uh, if you went into the background and if you use the magic wand, you probably find that you can select the whole sky in one go. Okay, but it's picked up some additional stuff there. So, it's, so it's using shift. There we go take away that area, no, it's a bit tricky, we'd have to take away some material from that, okay, well, it might work actually because that's that's behind, that is behind where we are, so we could edit the sky if we wanted to, but I'm just going to leave it as is, it looks a bit more natural, obviously, okay, but what I might do as a, for the final thing is, is maybe get rid of a bit of this side of the image, because there's, there's kind of you know, unsightly stuff there and I could take away some of the side as well so I could bring it down and you know, just be a bit more selective she doesn't have to have legs necessarily okay so something like that might be the final cropped version you know a bit more this is there's not much happening in this area it's pretty dull so that crop works for as existing and proposed. So this is your working version. 
Okay, so I'm going to put that back, leave it in the full size, and then save as montage and stage three. Okay, so that's your PSD version, that's the one you come back to if you need to make any changes. And for the files that you would put into your presentations, it'll be save as, and then you're looking for either a PNG, TIFF, JPEG, or bitmap. Okay, and then, so we've got montage final, existing, montage final, proposed. Okay, so there's a lot of steps in that. That's a pretty big exercise, but you know, if you can master those principles, you should be relatively, you know, be able to create your own montages fairly, fairly easily.